that impressive or what, right? <laughs> Can we do that again? I like that. That's very nice. I think we should do that every council meeting. It makes me feel very special. Uh, welcome. Um, I am delighted to welcome all of you here and all of those people who are watching us on television. This is a very special night. This is one of the fun nights for all of us that are in elected office because we get to honor those people who give up their time to help us do our job and to help make our community a better place. We cannot do the job that we need to do without volunteers. It just is impossible. With the funding that municipal governments get, as well as educational institutions, there just is no way that we can accomplish the kinds of things that we need to accomplish for our community without the help of the community and without volunteers. And we are truly blessed in Cupertino to have a wealth of community members who choose to give their time and their efforts and their expertise, their minds, their hearts, their souls, um, to this community in a variety of ways. This award that we do every year is kind of a special way for the city to say thank you to you and we do speak as we always do on behalf of all of the residents and businesses in this community uh, to say thank you for all that you do and I think as you see the recipients tonight you'll see that there is a um, a very rich variance in the backgrounds um, the way they spend their time and the way you choose to give uh, of yourself so that you can give to others. So each of us on the City Council gets to uh, present one or two awards, and I'm going to introduce our very able Vice Mayor, Patrick Kwok, and ask him to come down here, and he will start us with the first two recipients. Thank you, uh, Mayor James. The first Crest recipient for tonight is Jack Bocox. If you want to pay Jack Burkholz for the work he does these days, just give him a smile. The retired CPA says no other compensation is needed. He has spent the past six years volunteering for the Roadrunners and Lifeline Services, a program sponsored by El Camino Hospital that offers door-to-door -door transportation for those with no means to get to medical appointments, polling places, grocery stores, and other destinations. And you spend a day driving these people and trying to get them to smile. I think it's a challenge because some people are hurting very bad, very badly. And you get them to, to smile once. I think my goal is they're a different person getting out of my car than getting into my car. A Cupertino resident for 35 years, Jack started driving for Roadrunners at the suggestion of a friend. Since then, he has logged about 1,800 hours behind the wheel. You assist those people who have a real need. I am in retirement, I've been in retirement for some years, and this gives me a meaning in life. Even before he retired, Jack devoted time to volunteering for his church and community. At St. Joseph of Cupertino Church, he's known as the spokesman for the annual diocese fundraising drive. That's a role he's played for the past 18 years. And every year, through the church and Cupertino Community Services, he's on hand to distribute Thanksgiving baskets to those in need. And as I say, if you get someone to smile, that's a challenge, and that's what I like. I like to make people feel happy and do things for them so they can better their lives. Eric, would you like to come to the podium? Yeah. <laughs> it is indeed my pleasure this evening to present uh, this Crest Award to Jack. Jack has been a longtime resident of Cupertino, 35 years, and since his retirement 15 years ago, he has taken extra steps to help the communities. As you can see in the video, there's so many things that Jack has accomplished to help the communities, and uh, he is a man uh, with very warm-hearted, and he is a model citizen. I can say that because uh, in addition to all the volunteer work, uh, Jack has also been married to his wife, Janet, for 
54 years? 51. 51 years. <laughs> Come on. I try. Come on. <laughs> and uh, last year, uh, you celebrated the anniversary. Was it a couple of couple months ago? Yes. Yes. Last year. Congratulations. To her. <laughs> Jack and Janet. And last but not least is the California Legislature recognition from Sally Lieber, oh Assemblywoman. Thank you. And most of all, this prestigious award. My goodness. <laughs> Would you like to say something, Dad? I'm pretty quiet, but I'll try. <laughs> uh, Honorable Mayor and uh, members of the City Council and a good friend, Pat, it's a real honor to be with you tonight. Um, quite by surprise, um, you know, you say, I've lived with Janet here for 35 years in Cupertino. We have grown to love the community, I love the people in it, the way our government operates. It's visible, you can see what's going on. My experience has been with the federal government where no one knows what's going on at all. And here we can see everything, and I'm sure you're very happy that we can. Um, but you know, when one, sets out to volunteer, it's certainly not for public recognition, because if you did it that way, it, it just wouldn't be the same. I do think there's a commonality in all volunteering, however, whether it's for the road runners or for the Cupertino Community Services or for our bishop, all of us together. And I've written down five reasons, I think, why people could volunteer. Do I have time? <laughs> Thank you. I don't know why I ask, because I'm here. Um, God has been very good to me over the years, and I think it's about time that I return something to him. The people we assist, all of us, all the volunteers down, I'm sure, are going to say the same thing. We assist people who are in need. And without us, they might not have gotten the assistance that they need. The uh, appreciation they express is overwhelming. It's embarrassing. It sometimes it almost brings you to tears the way, the way they treat us for doing these things. We get a very warm feeling, particularly in the roadrunners, because we are so much better off than are they. We may think we have problems sometimes, but not, nothing like they have, really. And it's a nice thing. And lastly, my friends, I mean this sincerely, it brings a meaning to life. Because when one is retired, life is not the same. When I was active professionally with the United States General Accounting Office, working for the Congress, many times people would ask me, Jack, what do you think? What should we do? Where do we go from here, you know? And no one ever asks me that anymore. <laughs> never do, never do. Uh, well, well, I should take that. Janet does out there quite often, but you know, she doesn't need my advice. I don't think she wants it. She says that to make me feel good. Janet, God love you. You're wonderful. Uh, folks, tonight is going to live in my memories for forever, and I do appreciate it very much. And thank you so much. And God love all of you and Cupertino, too. Our second Crest recipient award is Monsignor Father Maloney. If you were to look for Monsignor Joseph Milani, you might find him sharing ideas with a class of kindergarteners. Or he might be sitting at the bedside of a hospital patient, or performing a wedding ceremony, or blessing a long line of pets one by one as they parade by him. But chances are you won't find him sitting idly in his retirement residence at St. Joseph of Cupertino Church. Although he retired in 1995 after 10 years as pastor of St. Joseph's, Monsignor Milani continues to tend to the needs of his flock and to those of the Cupertino community. Well, I've always been uh, people oriented and I think that's one of the things that I, I, I feel very good about, that I work with people. Ordained as a priest in 1950, he has spent a lifetime serving others, and he continues to encourage and inspire a high level of volunteerism in others. And we are part of the community, and I think that we should you know, try and do what we can for, for the community because our people are a part of this community, and this church deals with the people who are here in Cupertino. Monsignor Milani says he is proud of the church's outreach efforts that he has been involved in, including regular visits to shut-ins and the rotating shelter program. So these are some of the things 
On becoming involved, he has this one thought. I, I don't think you know until you kind of get in and uh, get your feet wet. And that helps a lot, I think, to see that talent is not necessarily something that sometimes is just the gifts that you have that you can give. Paula Malani, could you please come up? Monsignor is a, is a people uh, by nature. Uh, since his retirement nine years ago, uh, Monsignor has continued to be very active uh, as part of the diverse community, consisting people of all ages, races, rich and poor. Uh, he's very, very loved by people. Uh, I still recall that the people, uh, children in St. Joseph of Cupino remembered you because every year, St. Francis of Assisi Fish Day, Father Malani has never, never failed to come and bless the animals. Uh, Father Malani uh, has been, will be celebrating his 55 years as a priest next year and uh, ordained in 1950. That's a long, long year in service with the church and also diocese and St. Joseph of Cupertino. And um, he'll be celebrating his 79th birthday on June 8th. Yes, thank you. And it is indeed my pleasure to <laughs> congratulate you, you. wish you a happy birthday next, you. next, next month, thank and you. for all your services to the Cupertino community. Thank you very much. A special recognition from Thank you. Yeah, and from <laughs> Assemblywoman South Labor 22nd yeah. District. Thank you. And my goodness, I don't know where I'm gonna put all these. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, when I heard that I was uh, receiving this award, I couldn't believe it. Uh, and of course, that's what happens in most of my life. I can't believe half the things that have happened. <laughs> but I guess if you stay around long enough, something nice will, will happen to you. So uh, Mayor James, uh, council members, city of Cupertino, uh, please accept my very heartfelt thanks for this uh, Crest Award. Uh, I know the number of people ahead of me. I've been 23 years here in Cupertino. Uh, as a priest, as a pastor, and now in residence here. So there's a lot of the people that I know, and a lot of our old-timers have gone and so forth, but their memories are still here. And, and when I remember those who have received this award, I really am very humbled in this uh, reception that I have received, and I, I really thank you all very much. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, all of those have received this award, and tonight also. They have done so much uh, for our community. Uh, all of us, in a sense, uh, I, I presume, have taken extra steps to help make our city the great community that it is. And humbly, I very say that. Anything I may have done in the 23 years that I have pastored here in this church, uh, I hope that it's helped our community uh, to be what we are. Uh, it's an outstanding city, and we're all very proud of our community of Cupertino. And my sincere thanks for this award and, and for all of you. And, uh, uh, and all of you that have, in a sense, recognized this ministry. So thank you very much. I'd like to introduce uh, Councilwoman Dolly Sandoval, who is going to present the next award. Our next award recipient, recipient is Barbara Hill, who's the heart and soul of the Family Volunteer Program at St. Joseph's of Cupertino. Please watch the video.
Barbara Hill is a school librarian who's written the book on how to get involved. Her trademark dedication is imprinted on every event, large or small, at St. Joseph of Cupertino School. I'm the person that sort of has my arms out, catching things as they full, fall through the cracks, as it was, so, so to speak. Barbara works closely with parent volunteers who sign up for a range of activities at the school in order to offset tuition costs. As the volunteer coordinator, she makes sure that jobs get done and that people feel appreciated. We want their help. We encourage them to be here as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> I think they feel part of a family uh, when they're here. I think actually that's, I try to make them feel welcome, like everything, all their hours count. A Cupertino resident for 25 years, Barbara herself was a parent volunteer while her three children attended St. Joseph's. Now she spends even more time at the school overseeing all of its many social and fundraising events, putting in countless hours to ensure that everything runs smoothly. She says it's a labor of love. It's a joy to work here. I say that the hours are long, but the stress is low. It's, it's a happy place to be, and that's, that's why I spend a lot of time here. Barbara's unflagging enthusiasm and hard work inspires parents who see her as the heart of the school. I'm the person that they come to quite often because they, um, I guess they feel like I can, I've been here so long that maybe I can advise them or give them a little background or history on something or just listen to their concerns. I, and I think a lot of it is because I was a parent here myself first and I haven't forgotten that role. Barbara, please join me up here. Barbara, because of your welcoming spirit, your unflagging enthusiasm and amazing dedication to both the church's volunteer program the families that utilize the program and the children, um, you were um, nominated to get one of our Crest Awards this evening. You are always visible and setting an example on what it means to be a role model and an active parent and a caring person in our community. As you saw from the video, Barbara coordinates the um, special school event programs, fundraisers, and after school activities. She works her magic with both students and parents within the church community. You're a remarkable person, I hear, who never says no to additional volunteer work. <laughs> if wealth could be measured, Barbara, by talent, care, and humanity, you would be one of our zillionaires. <laughs> Thank you. Just so we're all clear on the many honors that the recipients are getting tonight, as Patrick mentioned, there's a um, proclamation from Sally Lieber, the 22nd Assembly District Representative. You also have a uh, proclamation from the County Board of Supervisors, uh, Representative Liz Niss, and a certificate of Congressional Representative from our Congressman, Michael Honda. Thank you. And from us, of course, you have our Crest Award Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable Mayor Sandra James and uh, Cupertino City Council, thank you very much for selecting me uh, to be one of the recipients this year for the Crest Award. I feel very honored to be among the, the wonderful, the seven in my company. I'm grateful to all at City Hall who, who chose me for this honor. I'd also like to thank Mary Lyons, my good friend and uh, the wonderful principal of St. Joseph of Cupertino School. Um, it's under her gu wise guidance and her administration that I do all of my work. And I am very grateful to her for spurring me on and uh, giving me a lot of encouragement and affirmation. Thank you to my patient husband, Steve, very patient husband, <laughs> and my three children. Only one of them is uh, still at home, Catherine, who's 18, and the boys are in their 20s and beyond college, but they are very supportive of me and very patient with my long hours, and uh, I appreciate that. 
And finally, I'd like to thank the St. Joseph of Cupertino community, the sweet children, the great parents, the excellent faculty and staff who work there and who are so dedicated. I have, I'm very, very fortunate to be there with them. I love going to work every day. I love going to school. All of the hours that I put in, both work and volunteer, um, are spent with a loving family, um, a supportive community, wonderful, generous people, sweet people that make my job so happy. And as I said in the video, the hours are very long, but the stress is low. Well, actually, that's not correct. There is no stress. There is no stress because it is the welcoming and loving atmosphere of the St. Joseph's school and parish staff that make me feel very blessed to be there. It makes my job fun. And I'm also very grateful to live in a city like Cupertino. It's a very close-knit community. Um, I've been very happy here in our neighborhood and um, in our school whenever I've had a concern or a question or a problem and, and called you, you responded right away, and I appreciate that. So thank you very much for this, this honor. It's my honor on behalf of the city to award the next Crest Award to Hema Kundarge. Please watch the video. Oh, give her a hand too. I'm very passionate about cooking. I love to eat and I love to watch uh, cooking shows on television. And when I was watching cooking shows, I always saw there was not a single Indian cooking show, a cooking show dedicated to Indian cuisine. Again, instead of sitting on the side and complaining and saying, why isn't anybody doing a cooking show on Indian cuisine? I decided to go on and make my own cooking show. Of course, it was new for me and uh, it was new for the TV studio also. That was seven years ago, and today the award-winning Indian Vegetarian Gourmet Cooking Show produced by Hima Kundarji is still going strong on the local public access channel. It serves as a perfect example of Hima's can-do spirit and her enthusiasm in showcasing her Indian culture. Since coming to Cupertino 12 years ago, she has consistently worked to demystify that culture through cooking and performing arts demonstrations all over the city. At the end of the day, when I sit down and I feel a sense of accomplishment, um, I don't think um, I would have got this sense of joy or peace if I had worked 15 hours a day and had the best cars and the best home. And um, I think this joy is much more than any other joy I would have gotten. In addition to serving on the city's Fine Arts Commission, Hema put in many hours last year as the cultural coordinator for Diwali, the Chamber of Commerce's Festival of Lights. To volunteer, you have to find the passion, the area where you really enjoy. Because if you're forced into volunteering, that, that's a total drain on you. But when you enjoy what you're doing, um, it's, it's, it's like uh, you're making the most of your time and you're having a good time. What more do you want? Emma, can you join me up here? Thank you. Hema has mentioned in the video that she got started by watching cooking shows and noticing there was no Indian uh, cooking shows on, on the television. Well, I have to tell you, I watch cooking shows all the time, um, and most of them are with you. Uh, <laughs> but I get so enthralled in watching them, I never actually go and cook at the same time. So. <laughs> Um, you, you have no doubt enriched the Cupertino community because of your integrating your advocacy for um, community involvement along with your love for community involvement. Not only has Hema uh, served on our Fine Arts Commission, as you saw, uh, she cooks also on TV for us. She and a number of others in the Indian community just started the first cricket team and league in our city, which is no small feat, let me tell you, to start something from scratch. Um, Hema has also coordinated a number of cultural events, talked me into 
performing in one, um, which only Hema could do that. She um, has been just active in, in the community, and we are so proud of you. Many have said that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. But really, Hema, the way to the, a community's heart is through hard work, advocacy, and cooking. Let's, <laughs> let's be truthful about that. Um, your goodness to our community just cannot be mentioned and is not worthy of just a simple presentation tonight. But thank you so much. You've got the standard proclamations that everyone is getting, and of course, your Crest Award. And I'll hold those for you if you'd like. I'm honored and touched by this award, and it's sort of a reflex action. When I see the camera, I have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your walk? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say I do what I do because I have a very unique family. Uh, my husband, Kiran, who's always encouraging me to reach for the stars. My children, Rohan and Pooja, who always make sure that my feet are on the ground. And um, my extended family of friends who are always there to support and encourage me. And I think this is just the beginning. There's lots more to do with all your support. And um, keep watching, we'll do something more. <laughs> Thank you. The next presenter of our Crest Awards is Council Member Richard Lowenthal. Hold the applause. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is a great honor for me. Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to start off with somebody that has volunteered a lot longer than I have. Um, she's, uh, I don't know what title to use for, for Don Austin. It could be president or chairperson or commissioner, because she's done it all. Quotarian, maybe. Uh, I can tell you she's the only one in here that really knows how to say the word Cupertino correctly, and she'll tell us about that. So let, <laughs> let's see the, the uh, video about Donna Austin. What I like about this history, the historical society, is that it's a hands-on thing where kids can really see what it was like and what we're doing now and how wonderful it is. So that history is a, a living thing. It's not a, it's not a past thing. It's not the end, but it's just a beginning. Donna Austin has parlayed her passion for history and more than 40 years of teaching experience into a role that suits her to a T. As president of the Cupertino Historical Society's Board of Directors, she's been instrumental in firing up the organization with new ideas to engage residents of all ages. At the Center for Living History, where children can have hands-on experiences with, with history itself and with the future, where we're going, you know, like making silicon chips and making butter and weaving and just different kinds of things excite me to know that uh, this type of thing is being offered at the museum. Donna extends her interest in history to her own family. She's also on the board of the Portuguese Historical Museum in San Jose. As for other volunteer activities, she's especially proud of her involvement in Quota International of Cupertino, a service group that assists underprivileged women and children and the deaf and hearing impaired. Their emphasis is on, you know, poor children, the deaf, and, um, battered women. And to me this was really an interesting thing. But I think the best thing about the organization is the fact that we're um, also interrelated and we really uh, are social and um, help each other and really uh, there's a friendships that evolve from this. You, you give, but you get an awful lot from, from what you're giving. Donna's being shy. Donna also has been, uh, could you stand right there? She, she doesn't take direction, she gives direction. Um, Donna's been in front of these cameras before too because it wasn't mentioned here and it's not mentioned in this bio, but she was uh, the chair of our planning commission uh, and, a, and a great leader on the planning commission. 
and the, the way probably that I know her best, the planning commission is extremely tough duty, and it is, it is a volunteer job, but it's long nights. Donna can attest to that. Uh, I've seen her here uh, as late as midnight in a planning commission meeting, uh, and uh, it's years of service, and there's criticism. They, actually, they get as much um, mail of all types as we get, uh, but uh, they're, they're really the unsung heroes of planning and, and a development of the city. In addition, she's been the uh, president of the Historical Society for the last three years, uh, so she's a leader of volunteers as well, uh, and she helps lead, um, lead other volunteers into giving great service, uh, and so she's highly leveraged. Um, she's a quotarian. Uh, she is uh, also, she was uh, um, really at the beginning of this Living History Center, which you'll hear a lot about, but, um, but one thing she did was uh, take us on a field trip over to Ardenwood in Fremont so we could see what it was like, and, uh, and she and her husband came and uh, guided us through Ardenwood, and we learned a lot. Um, it's been my pleasure to, to be associated with Donna. She's uh, helped us in so many ways, and she's unstoppable. She's the energizer bunny of Cupertino, because every time you turn around, she's in the next organization. She just won't quit, um, and, and we're lucky to have you, and Cupertino's lucky to have you. So thank you very much, Donna, uh, for coming here, and um, we really appreciate all you've done and expect a lot more out of you. I know you're unstoppable. <laughs> So why don't you get up here and tell us how to say Cupertino correctly. I really don't have a speech prepared. Um, I think that uh, Cupertino is a place I really love. I, I love the multicultural uh, life. I think the people here are so neat. I've developed so many friendships, but I think the person I have to thank the most probably is my husband, Scott, who's been so supportive of me in all of my <laughs> He's right there with me. And my two daughters, uh, my probably my greatest achievement right there, and <laughs> my grandchildren are my joy. I really worried about what I was going to do when I retired. <laughs> and I keep waiting to get bored, but it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. Anyway, I thank you very much, the city, for doing this program. It's wonderful. So, Donna, I, I um, have here from Liz Niss, from the Board of Supervisors, uh, from the U.S. Congress, Michael Honda, and from our state government, uh, Sally Lieber. Recognition? Little old Cupertino who loves you dearly. Here's your Crest Award. <laughs> now, I've no known Donna for a while back, uh, but I just met the next recipient tonight. Um, but I'm, I'm learning quickly, and, uh, and I'm falling in love, like a lot of other people have, with Laverne Swanson. It's not surprising that a person with Laverne Swanson's bright outlook on life would be drawn to a place called Sunnyview. But one day I came to Sunnyview, and the minute I walked through the doors, I knew this was a place where I wanted to, to work and volunteer my service. And that was in 1981 that I started volunteering here. To the Sunnyview Retirement Community in Cupertino, Laverne brought a knack for managing the facility's little store, a good supply of energy, and of course, her signature sunny disposition. Well, I love to be around people, and I've always, uh, from, the, from my very first job, I've always worked in, in personnel management with people, helping people, um, and that's just part of me. I've always, that's the only type of work I want to do, <laughs> is be able to care and help others. Laverne manages Sunnyview's little nonprofit store and its volunteers. She does all the shopping for it and acts as bookkeeper as well. 
Perhaps more importantly, though, are the personal touches she offers residents, driving them to errands and medical appointments, being there as a friend. I take people to the hairdressers or take them to different activities that we have. Uh, uh, I have uh, different times of the year. I have them at my home. I'll take a group of friends for a tea or we go out to lunch. And um, I just like to socialize with the people. <laughs> How does she manage to stay so consistently upbeat? I just love being around people and, and helping people and knowing that I'm bringing a little happiness into their lives and keeping a positive attitude. <laughs>
The next recipient of the Quest Award is a disaster service group that serves our community. They call Cupertino Amateur Radio Emergency Service, CARES for sure. Let's watch the tape. <laughs> There's been a major earthquake in the Bay Area, and Cupertino is especially hard hit. Who you gonna call? CARES, of course. The Cupertino Amateur Radio Emergency Services team stands at the ready to provide a reliable communications link during any local disaster. In 89, when we had our earthquake here, CARES was on the air and communicating with County Com within 30 minutes after the earthquake hit. Um, CARES, CARES is an organization of about 85 members who live and work within the city of Cupertino and what they've done is they have voluntarily signed up with the city uh, to provide um, emergency communication services in the event that we have a disaster. They bring their own equipment, uh, we, we uh, train as an organization, we train together and uh, we practice for the big one. Uh, whether it's an earthquake or it's a, uh, it's a flood or a, a, a terrorist response, you know, the organization is preparing to provide emergency communications for the city. Last year, CARES members logged more than 1,200 volunteer hours. They provided backup communications at several events and festivals, participated in city emergency drills, and helped schools install radio antennas to improve disaster communications, among other activities. Their contribution to the city is undeniable, but many members say they too benefit from CARES. This particular volunteering, I think, has certainly made me much more aware of, you know, the potentials of things that could happen, um, kind of forced to look at my own preparedness, um, and just basically made me, you know, much more able to deal with whatever situations come along. learning and uh, um, understand the background the services the CARES group has providing I feel like every single members every single uh, um, members in the group deserve a, a single um, award so now I would like to introduce a little bit about them and I would like to invite the group members come to join me up in front Quest provides such a valuable service to our community by being our reliable communication links in case of disaster that might affect the Cupertino. Without communications, um, without any compensation, uh, this professional has spent 18 years of training and planning for effective emergency communication to make a Cupertino a safer place to live. When there's no emergencies, they volunteer their weekends and evenings to teach their communications expertise to groups for parades and events. Also, they have donated their time to install radio antennas on local schools, document locations to check in Cupertino in case of disaster, and establish partnership with the Cupertino Sanitary District and the San Jose Water Company. They're outstanding members of our community providing over a uh, thousand hours of volunteer service to Cupertino in the year of 2003, CARES embodies volunteerism and taking extra steps for Cupertinos. Congratulations, folks. And I'd like to um, present you a little token to share, to share our appreciation. The certificates from our um, supervisor, county supervisor, listeners. A certificate from the uh, um, my Honda, our congressman, and a certificate from um, Valley Lever, the uh, um, our assembly, assembly, assembly woman. woman. Thank you. Anybody would like to uh, represent a group and give a um, speech? Sure, thanks, thanks Thank Chris. Um, Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, members of the community, uh, 
CARES works for, basically works for, because of three things. First, it's the members. It's, a, it's an organization that uh, really draws its strength from the community. All the members come from the community. And the nice thing about the membership is the diversity of the membership. We've got folks from all ages, from, from high school through uh, uh, retirees, with a, a very diverse back set of backgrounds. And because of that, we thrive. So the membership is really one of the, one of the foundation, uh, founding uh, m portions of it that really make uh, CARES work. The other two things that uh, really help, uh, that has made, made, us th made us thrive, is the sponsorship from uh, Marsha Hovey and Santa Clara County Fire. Uh, she has been a wonderful sponsor. She's been, uh, promo she's been helping to promote the organization. She's been a great uh, feed for members through the CERT organization. Uh, and because of that, we're, we're very grateful for having her on board. The last, uh, the last reason is because of you, the, uh, the city council and the city of Cupertino. The support that we've received from the city as a volunteer organization serving the city has been phenomenal. So on behalf of all the members of CARES, I want to thank you very much for this, uh, this award. It is uh, truly an honor to receive it. Thank you. Now I'd like to give the microphone back to our mayor, Sandra James. Thank you, and I get to um, present the award to our final recipient, a very good friend and someone many of us know and have worked with, Mahesh Nihalani. Let's hear about him. From India to Africa, from England to Cupertino, wherever he's lived, Mahesh Nihalani has worked to make his community a better place. He's been in Cupertino less than four years, but already Mahesh has made an impact on this city. Uh, volunteering goes back a long way in our family. My father, my grandfather uh, were educationists, so they did a lot of volunteer and community work, and I think that's where the genes came down, and you know, I got involved in it also. Mahesh is on the city's housing commission and is also involved in the Chamber of Commerce and Asian American Business Council. He's an active member of the Five C's and helps coordinate events that promote intercultural understanding. And he serves on the Senior Center Advisory Board. But it's his work with Cubertino Community Services that is especially close to his heart. I think the most rewarding volunteer activity for me was the food pantry at the CCS. I mean, that really gave me a lot of satisfaction. Of course, I mean, all, all other volunteer activities also have their own you know, levels of satisfaction. I, I feel greatly satisfied with whatever I do. But that definitely was the most satisfying. And uh, I look forward when I can, you know, find time and do that over and over again. Whether he's setting up a cricket league to help bring area Indians together or raising funds for the Cupertino Library Project, Mahesh keeps alive his family tradition of volunteerism. When you make other people happy, you're happy. I'd like you to stand on that on that line because the camera shot is good. See, that's what it is. That's what it's all about. We have very talented people downstairs running this show. Um, I've known Mahesh just the last four years because that's how long he's been in Cupertino, but it seems like I've known him all my life. Um, there is a spiritual soul to Mahesh that reaches out to me and I think to everyone that deals with him that makes him very unique. Um, Whatever he does, you know it comes from deep down inside of him in a very special place. And, and he has not only helped us raise money for our library fund, in fact, I accepted a $12,000 check today from the Indian community uh, with more to come. Now, those were 300 checks that uh, individuals that gave, that Mahesh and, and uh, Hima and the other people in the Indian community are organizing to raise money for our beautiful new library. In addition to that, um, Mahesh brought some very interesting um, 
men into my office a couple months ago and proposed a, a cricket uh, league for Cupertino, a youth cricket league, and of course we don't have a cricket field. So uh, that was that was kind of the first problem, but it didn't de deter him at all. Um, he had a good idea, he had some good people, and he knew who to come to and who to talk to, and so um, the city manager and myself and the rest of us got together and we um, we all made it happen, and we now have, you know, one of the first uh, cricket, youth cricket leagues um, in the country, and certainly in California, which we're very proud of. Um, Mahesh um, was also, along with Hema, who you met earlier, um, brought the first of Ali, uh Festival of Lights uh, celebration to Cupertino two years ago, was that? Last year. Last year. And I know I was honored to get to, uh, to model, as did Richard and Dolly, and um, um, it was wonderful. And one of the things I like the most about Mahesh that, that really inspires me is that, that he has a very gentle, caring, accepting way of taking our hands and saying, let me introduce you to my culture while I learn more about your culture. And it is just a very accepting, sharing, positive way to 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 share experiences and it works by the way it works very very well so I personally have learned an awful lot about the Indian culture um, from Mahesh as has this community in addition to that he has uh, recently been helping us a lot with economic development Richard and I sit on the Econ economic development council and we work very hard to bring businesses into Cupertino and to keep our business climate healthy and Mahesh has been reaching out to um, to the Indian businesses and um, asking us to help find facilities and locations for them that has been extremely helpful. So he has all kinds of talents, uh, but again I would go back to underlying all of that is this wonderful, spiritual, caring, giving nature. In addition to that, he's a very talented jeweler. <laughs> you probably don't know that, but he is. I know our city manager and his wife know that very well. <laughs> uh, so, Mahesh, we are just so thankful you moved to Cupertino. We are absolutely delighted to have you here. You have enriched our community and our lives. And why don't you say something while I get your, uh, your awards ready for you? Thank you. Honorable Mayor Sandra James. Uh, city Council members, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very, very much for this uh, great honor, for considering me worthy to receive this. Uh, it's such a divine uh, coincidence, and as uh, Mayor Sandra James said, probably it's the spirituality which reflects from me to her, but I read a message of the day every morning uh, from a very eminent scholar and philosopher from India called Swami Chinmayananda. And this morning, when I came to the date 19th of May, and I opened the page to read what 19th of May says, and I'll read this out to you. It says, the highest prayer in this world is service. The greatest devotion is loving the people around us, and the noblest character trait is divine compassion for all living creatures. And that's 19th of May. <laughs> and the award that I have been honored with uh, basically implies all these things. And uh, I would like uh, to thank all of you, not only for giving me the award, but more for the, the uh, support and the encouragement to do these things, to take the extra steps. And that thanks goes to my family my wife Kamal and my sons Rahul and Gaurav who are here for being able to appreciate, understand and support my work. And uh, as Jack said at the beginning, it's the smile that you receive from people that you serve which brings a meaning to life. And it has brought a lot of meaning to my life. And like Hema said, we have miles to go before we sleep and miles to go before we sleep. Thank you very much. Here's your beautiful award from your city government. And then, as you've already heard, you have a very beautiful proclamation from your county government, Supervisor Liz Ness, from your state government, Assemblywoman Sally Lieber, and from your congressional federal government, Congressman Mike Honda. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you.
Uh, in closing, I, I want to just mention one thing. Um, this is all about volunteerism, and the people that actually chose our recipients were not the five of us, but they were other volunteers, a community group of volunteers that looks at all of the um, nominations that are sent in, and they select the recipients. We are lucky enough to be able to give the awards, and fortunately, I think in most instances, um, one or more of us are very well aware of the recipients, and so it's kind of nice to be able to give that award from the heart and from some personal knowledge. Um, there is absolutely no reason for anyone who lives in Cupertino or works in Cupertino to be lonely. And I always use this occasion to make that point because we do still have lonely people who don't understand that every organization that we have, whether it's private or public, nonprofit, uh, municipal, needs help. We all need help. None of us can really do our job in isolation, and we all can use some extra hands and some extra hearts and some extra minds. And all the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful years of experiences that people bring to the table, whether they're little children, and they have really special experiences they bring, and open minds, which some of us don't have, um, or whether it's someone who is retired and has a wealth of experiences and, and doesn't have a, um, other demands upon their time now. Whatever it is, there's absolutely no reason to be lonely. And if you know someone who is, or you are, anyone who's listening, just you know, call City Hall, pick up the phone and call any one of these organizations and tell them you want to help. And I guarantee you, it will open your life to a whole new world of friendships and it will enrich other people's lives just by knowing you. So thank you all for being here. We're going to have a reception out in the lobby. So come and join us so we can kind of um, chit chat and congratulate everyone. And again, thank you for all that you do from all of us that represent everyone in this community. What you just said, what you just